love. I love you. <laughs> and I'm here because I love you. This is what's coming up. I was just uh, laying down taking a nap and I woke up and it was like, oh yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one. So crash course on boundaries. Okay, this is for everybody. This can benefit everybody because every single human being Your life can get better and better and better and better and freer and freer and freer as you learn what boundaries are and as you start to live them. Okay, so what is a boundary? A boundary is essentially how you take care of yourself in each moment. Okay, it's what you say yes to, it's what you say no to. And the way that it works is essentially the things that you say no to, that word no is the most important because we are conditioned in our society that we don't have a right to say no to things, okay? When we're a kid and we say no, if a mom and dad say, you know, you're going to school, like school is a perfect example. At five years old, at least in America here, um, we have to go to kindergarten. It's the law, you have to go. <laughs> so if you say, if it doesn't feel right, you know, I remember I was really anxious to go into this place to leave, you know, I had been with mom and dad and my brother and my sister every single day and then all of a sudden one day, it's like now you have to go to school. And if I say, no, no, I don't want to go, well, mom and dad can't really respect that because they will get in trouble by the law <laughs> if they were to respect that. So there's some, we're con you know, that's just one example of how from a very early age we are conditioned to see that we don't have our own autonomy. That there's somebody bigger and stronger who will essentially <laughs> put us in jail or put somebody we love in jail if we don't do what it is that society dictates that we must do. And that really is real, you know, it, does, it sounds extreme about being put in jail. But in Colorado here, um, I hear stories about parents who, you know, if, 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 you, if they don't have their kids going to school as much as the law dictates, like that is ultimately what will happen, is a parent will get put in jail. Okay, so that's the, our society is running on that. If you don't do what it is that other people are dictating that you need to do, you will have your freedom taken away. You will be judged, you will be shamed, you will be ostracized unless you conform, okay? And everybody exists within that. So we are raised, you know, imagine, here's an analogy. And it, and it kind of plays off like when, when we're born into this world, think of a little baby. Think of how beautiful they are. They're just sitting there, just resting looking around, just in their environment, in their experience, just happy as a clam. Mm -hmm. They'll stick their hand in their mouth. Mm, sure, that feels good, I'll do that. Oh, grab my feet, play with those. That feels good. Oh, I'll grab those keys and look at them and listen to them. Everything is just pure exploration. You know, so there's this state of resting peace, okay? And then, of course, when the body starts to send signals of discomfort, a baby cries, so if it gets hungry, or if it gets cold, or any feeling that's not good, then it cries and it makes noise to signal, okay, to mom and dad, because of course a baby can't take care of those things themselves. So that's where then caretakers or caregivers come around and then they take care of the baby's needs, okay? But as we grow up, okay, we're, we're taught that, hey, you know, your body's signals of what feels right and what feels wrong ultimately are not what determines your actions, okay? So our society splits us off because it says, hey, you have to go to school. You know, you have to talk a certain way or else people will get upset. You know, you can't talk too loud. That's like you see um, parents in restaurants where, you know, if their kids are having fun and laughing and talking, they're shh, 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 shh. Or, you know, I see a lot of um, moms and dads, like down here in Boulder, there's this little um, place where the kids play, where water's shooting up out of the ground, this little like spray ground, and the kids are having so much fun and sometimes they run up to each other and just kind of bop each other or bump into each other and they're smiling, having fun. And then you see the parents like, oh no, I don't want my kid to be one of those kids that you know doesn't know the rules and that breaks the rules. So they get all stern and they go over and they grab them and they say, do not hit, do not hit. And for the kids' experience, it's kind of like, whoa, like what? I was just, you know, being myself and being free and, and the other kid wasn't even having, the kid, other kid was having fun too. And so the point is that we are repeatedly told over and over and over through our experience that we are not allowed to use our feelings of what's right and wrong to take care of ourselves. Okay, so imagine that you just won 
one day you wake up and you are sitting in a beautiful meadow just absolutely beautiful green grass and flowers and beautiful trees and the sky is blue and it's quiet and you're the only person that's there you're just sitting in this very comfortable place and it's, it, this kind of represents the state of like being a baby okay where you're just comfortable okay there's nothing driving you to, to, to go do anything to go to work or to go anywhere you know you're just there you're comfortable and you know you see a flower and maybe you pick it and you smell it and you're comfortable being alone and you're just resting there feel into that nothing pushing you any particular way can you sink into that right now what does that feel like you're just peaceful okay a state of peace is a peace where there's just no needs for things to be different okay and lack of peace is when there's something always driving you know like oh I got to do this oh and then I got to do this and I got to do this and you right now are running on that I always call it the hamster wheel you know it just keeps you from your peace because you're always thinking that something else needs to be done oh I got to take care of this and oh I got to get this done and your decisions are always being driven ultimately by pressure that you perceive to be coming from outside of you you know your boss or your kids or you know your lawn you know I gotta mow the lawn I gotta do this I gotta do that and it's like this pressure okay but imagine you're just sitting in this meadow peaceful no other people around and you're just perfectly comfortable and then imagine someone comes up and they come up close to you and they say hey you need to move you need to get out of here Okay, and you take that in and you look up at that person and imagine if you could live in a state where you don't feel any like emotional charge from that no matter what their energy is so if they're really aggressive and mean and they're like hey you you need that you need to get out of here I want that spot I want that spot and they they're blaming you and uh, you know pushing on you with their words and imagine if you lived in a state where you could just look right up at them in their eyes and you just saw it as like very curious like wow this interesting creature you know maybe in this state that you're in in this analogy it's like you're the only person that you've ever seen or known and so this is like a new foreign thing and this person's like doo -doo -doo -doo, you know saying all these things and you're just wow like and then you just look up at them and say no I'm comfortable here and I'm gonna continue to sit here because this feels good and then if they say well that's my spot you need to move Okay, imagine a life where you just are like, no, I'm not going to change, no matter how uncomfortable you are. Can you feel that, how powerful that is? Can you feel that, how, ah, the ice cream truck, I love the music, listen to this. Okay. So boundaries are your ability to navigate your experience by using your body's signals, okay? Our body has signals, they're called emotions, okay? They're called feelings. So when you're talking with someone, there's every single day you deal with thousands and thousands of situations where you can navigate things differently, okay? And, and generally we're unconscious because we've been raised in a society and conditioned to deal with things a certain way. So let me just think of a few things um, that are happen on a day-to-day -day basis where, you know, my point with the analogy was to say that's where when you, when you learn to mind your boundaries and you do your emotional work and you open your heart more and more and more and more, you can start to interact with people like that. You know, I have, I have people come up to me sometimes who are assuming something to be true. Um, maybe, like earlier today I was walking down the street um, and I kind of bumped into somebody, but it felt like they bumped me, actually. And this guy turned to me, he's like, hey, watch where you're going. And it didn't feel right in my body, you know, that he said that to me, because I knew of my innocence. I knew that I was, I didn't do anything on purpose, or I didn't do anything negligent. So there was no need to apologize or anything like that. And so I just looked right at him and was like, I hear you. <laughs> just kept going, you know. So his emotional charge, it, does, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, put any pressure on me anymore you know in a situation like that even just a couple years ago I would have been like you watch where you're going or hey I didn't do anything or, you know like I would have met him in that constricted space okay because his energy would have triggered mine okay but as you navigate your boundaries and you say yes and no to the things that your body your sense of right and wrong and what feels right to you that's what you're using 
to guide you. So if someone's talking to you, imagine in that analogy, somebody, you know, you're sitting there just peaceful, you're happy where you are, and someone comes up and says, you know, they just start talking to you. Hey, I want to tell you the story. And at first you're like, oh, okay, and you're, you're kind of curious and interested. But imagine they just kind of start rambling, which happens in your life a lot, right? People who just talk and they fill space. And it's usually because everyone's driven by this fear of being alone in silence. It really is. Once you can find an ability and feel comfortable with yourself alone in silence, then every single choice you make is really, it needs to be better than that experience. Because when you can be alone in silence, comfortably by yourself, like I am right now, if that's comfortable, then guess what? You don't do anything unless it improves upon that situation. So if someone were to come up right now and sit down in this chair right next to me and start talking, hey Ryan, you know, this and this and this and so, you know, I might entertain it at first because something new is a little interesting, a little curious, but if I realized that what they were saying just wasn't appealing or just, I don't know, it was just kind of boring, it just didn't turn me on, you know, so my body kind of starts to have signals of like, oh no, this doesn't feel right, you know, like, so it's like you have almost like a, a thermometer, an emotional thermometer, and when you're really tuned into it and you give yourself permission to live from that, that's what your boundaries are, you know? So imagine this person, imagine they want to tell an hour-long story and they start into it, and I'm the type of person who, right, I'd say, hey, just let me stop you there. You know, I was enjoying the silence and I really would rather be in that than hear your story, and I'm sorry if that doesn't feel good to you, but that's what's true for me, okay? So I'd actually rather have you have you leave and maybe we can connect another time and if they turn and get indignant with me and say well that's rude that's where when you're living in a free state and you know you're comfortable with who you are and you've done your emotional work no matter what he would say to me you yeah, well that's rude even if he got in my face and was like you're 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 an asshole I would just sit here and say hey I hear you and I don't like the way that you're talking to me right now it doesn't feel good so I I'm definitely asking you to leave Okay, and then if he didn't leave, if he, oh, I'm gonna sit right here because he's mad at me, well then I've got, I've always got options. I could get up and just walk away and go for a walk. Problem solved, okay? Or I could, because this is my place, I could call the police. <laughs> just say, hey, you know, I, I'm, um, I'm not comfortable with you staying here and I've told you that I need you to leave and I need to stand up for what's right for me and I'm gonna call the police. So if you don't leave, the police will be here in a little bit. So do you see, see what that is? Is that it's, it's we, we each have to own that we are worthy of, of living from a place of peace and, and knowing that our particular peace, just like in the analogy of sitting in that meadow, if something comes in and, and is different than what we want, then it's our responsibility to take care of ourselves. Most people exist in a state where when things are going on around them that they don't like, they, you know, they, they internally, they think about it and they don't like it. Oh, I don't like the way this guy talks or, you know, and they'll engage in conversations with people and kind of put a smile on, but inside people are like, oh, I don't want to be here. You know, people do all kinds of things that they don't want to do. You know, go to church when they don't want to go or go to some dinner party if they don't want to go because they feel obligated. And then they don't like the experience there. And then they, you know, resentment builds. See, when you don't take care of yourself, you turn into someone who's really resentful. If it, you know, people who are really grumpy and, you know, kind of everything, you know, they're cynical and it's because they have not been living freely, okay? And they're kind of a victim of their circumstances. We all are. We're a victim of what we grew up in. But we can stay in that victim state. You know, it's like, oh, I hate when this person talks to me. You know, at work, maybe you have a coworker <laughs> who comes and talks to you. And then, like, when, you, when they walk away, you turn. So you're not like, I don't like that sound. So immediately, I'm thinking, okay, what do I need to do to take care of myself? I could go over there and ask them to turn the lawnmower off. Or I can pick up the camera and walk inside. That's my choice, because I don't want to deal with that right now. But you see how quickly I did that? As soon as that lawnmower fired up, I knew like, okay, I don't want to talk loud. I don't want you guys, who I'm making this video for, my tribe, I don't want you to um, have to hear that lawnmower. So listen to this quiet. And that's taking care of yourself in the moment. 
make the change, okay? You always have more than two options. People always, the mind tends to think in black and white. It thinks two options. So in that situation that I was talking about with a coworker, you know, most people exist in this place where they just think like, oh, I have to listen to this person or I would kind of be mean to push them away and I don't want to be mean. No one wants to be mean because it's not our, national, our, our natural state to be mean. So that's why when things annoy you and trigger you, when you're in a repressed state where you haven't been living freely, it's hard to speak your truth because it's so bottled up and you're worried that when you speak it, it will come across with a charge, with some meanness to it. And then the other person would be like, whoa, that's mean, you know, and then connection would be broken. And we all want to keep connection. And so we don't, we tend to not speak our truth because we're afraid to break connection. We don't want to be mean because when we're mean, when we express our truth and another person gets upset and it breaks connection, then we tend to feel guilty. And then we start to beat up on ourselves and like, oh, I need to be nicer. I need to be kinder. And that's our society, particularly in America right now, is just running on that, like be kind, be kind. And so everyone kind of puts these smiles on. But then you know how it is when that coworker walks away, then people turn to their other coworkers, you know, at their cubicles or whatever, and then they, they make fun of that person. They make a, a snide comment like, oh, we haven't heard that story before. Or, you know, they kind of like these biting comments. And those biting comments are ways to vent the, the energy of frustration but it's not very a very healthy way to do it to other people because then you're forming connection with other people essentially around judging that other person or not liking them. And that's never going to create forward movement in terms of heart opening and becoming more healthy emotionally. That'll keep you stuck and bound. That's why gossip is so negative for humanity because what gossip is, is it's a state of, hey, I don't have the fortitude and the emotional strength and the inner strength to deal with conflict directly and to speak with truth and to try to maintain connection and work through something and clear the air. And because I'm so frustrated and like, you know, all this energy is built up, this emotion's built up and I'm annoyed and I'm frustrated and I'm exhausted and I'm like at my wits end, what I do is I go and I talk to other people about it. Can you believe that guy? He always does this and this and this and this. Whew, and and people love to make a connection over that, over like the other things that people do. And what's really b tough is that when people smile to each other's faces and, you know, and, and then it's not what's authentic. You know, I use that word authenticity a lot. And, you know, if, if a, a smile is meant to, to symbolize, you know, goodwill, good feelings, positivity, and our society has really gotten behind a, a mask, a smile mask that's like, oh, hi. You know, but then a lot of times it's it's just not real. People inside are harboring all kinds of negativity and thoughts. And this is all because people aren't able to take care of themselves because they're not encouraged to. So what I'm inviting you to do if you haven't started already is to own, hey, I'm good. I'm a good person. I deserve to live freely. I deserve to pull out of all of the societal pressures around me and all the rules you know, all these cultural norms, because what happens is parents, as they raise kids, they're running on this program that their kids won't be accepted if they don't fit in. And parents think the last thing that I want is for my kid to not fit in because then, and they're not even conscious of this, but really what's driving is because then I would feel bad. I would feel guilty. You know, p parents tend to think that they're really caring about their kids, all the pressure, all the rules. It's for the kids, but really it's to assuage their own discomfort. And I've been there. I can speak firsthand about this, you know, in my parenting in the past. Um, it's just the way that it is. And it comes from a good place, you know, just wanting peace and harmony. But really what that is, is it's like, hey, I'm going to condition my kids and, and basically communicate to them that they're not free, that they can't take care of themselves, that their emotions and their feelings are not to be respected. You know, the rules are to be respected. Got to go to school. Got to talk a certain way. Have to, um, you know, treat others a certain way. You can't speak your truth because other people might be offended. And it's all this societal way of managing each other's feelings and keeping each other comfortable. But guess what? As we try to keep all keep each other comfortable, all of the discomfort actually builds and builds and builds because we're not being authentic. We're not being honest. And that's the beauty of human life and consciousness and nature is that when things get repressed, when things get held down, they find a, a, another way to bubble out and to burst out. And that's like in my life, man, I was the 
biggest rule follower. Holy cow, I was following all the rules. I was a good Christian, good husband, good CEO, good son, you know, doing all the rules the best that I could and going hard. But then guess what? My emotional state started to really fall apart. I started to become really anxious. Every day before I would go in to run my business, my chest was so tight and I started to tune into that and like, oh, it was so uncomfortable. I just didn't want to go in. Okay, and most people are existing in that state where there's tons of pressure in their body, but the mind has a way of numbing us to that. We're not even aware of it. So when you experience depression, anxiety, or you know any just feelings of not feeling good, not feeling right, and then we start to numb it with TV, with food, with you know hanging out with friends and just kind of like surfacey conversation, um, all of these things that we do, because again, if we sit in silence. just tune into our bodies like, whoa, there's a lot there and it's uncomfortable. And so the path from the head to the heart is learning to tune into the feelings in the body. Now here's a little exercise. Go like this with your hands. Okay, so most people are numb to the energy in their body. I was. I was totally numb. And there's different ways to get into it. You know, I've talked about the presence process by Michael Brown, which involves like some breathing exercises, which help you become more and more present with your body and feel things. And like, ooh, there's a lot there. There's a lot to move, okay? But if you want your freedom and you want to get to that place of home base where you're resting in that meadow always and you're making choices to keep your peace, so you're always existing in a state of peace because you're able to take care of yourself. Anything like that lawnmower starts to happen. You know, I could have gone right over to that guy and said, hey, I know you need to mow your lawn, but I'm in the process of making a video and I'd really like you to, to not mow right now. Would you be willing to do that? See how like direct that is? And then, of course, as he responds to that, then I have choices of what I'm going to do. But my point is that I've learned, I've just come into a, to being where a place where if the, anything that disrupts my peace, I take responsibility for it. I don't sit like a victim, say, that guy with the lawnmower, I hate that guy, and then tell my friends who come over, yeah, that guy over there, he's always mowing his lawn, it's so annoying. That's the victim stance who thinks like that I can't take care of myself, that I can't deal with conflict. Well, guess what? I'm responsible for my own space my own situation and if I don't like something, I'm the one responsible to change it. And if I don't, I'm just gonna be cynical and grumpy and it will start to affect my state of being and pretty soon people won't wanna be around me very much and then I'll be wondering, where's my friends? Where's my lovers? You know, oh, woe is me. I guess nobody likes me and then it's just this spiral of depression and like self-loathing, okay? But we all are beautiful. No one deserves to be in a state of self-loathing. It's fake, okay? It's just, it's just bound up energy. Okay, so here's a way to get in tune with energy. Go like this, rub your hands together, get that heat, get that friction going, and just take a big breath and relax and just notice all the tingling in your hands. That is energy. Everything in this universe is made of energy, okay? And we have energy running through our bodies. Okay, our heart gives off a tremendous electromagnetic field, and so does our brain. Okay, so there's all kinds of energetic systems running through our body. And so when you tune into that energy, what I invite you to do is spend time, you know, feeling that energy and then follow it. You can follow it down your arms. You can follow it into your body, into your torso. And particularly once you start to unnumb in your heart area and you start to be able to feel your feelings in there. Like next time you have anxiety or any stress, or any annoyance, or if you get in a conflict with somebody and you get fired up, you know, you see hives come up on people, their neck gets all red, and people are like, oh, you know, they get triggered, and then there's emotion running through the body. But the mind exists in a state where it holds it back and it holds it down. Well, what? guess what? It needs to be moved. So dancing and shouting and anything that moves that energy, it's basically freeing up our heart. It's literally, psh, 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 it's opening things up, and then we can start to speak our truth more and more and more. And sometimes our truth will come out in a mean or angry way. And guess what? That's okay. It's not the end of the world. And the more you do it, the more you say no. You know, the more you say, hey, you know, I, I, I know you want to stop me, mister, from Greenpeace and talk to me about the rainforest, but right, it just doesn't feel right right now. I just don't want to talk to you. And um, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep going and you keep walking, you know, whatever it is. But it's like you choose your own circumstance, your own experience, and you don't owe anyone anything. Do you hear that? You don't owe anyone anything. 
Can you let that sink in? Can you receive that as truth? You don't owe anyone anything. Even your family, your loved ones, you don't owe them anything. And as long as you think you do and you act out of obligation and you go home for Thanksgiving when you really don't want to or you call your mom when you really don't want to, you think you're loving them because they would get upset if you didn't do those things. So you are assuaging their discomfort by doing things and making you know, behaviors that you ultimately don't want to do. Well, that is only going to end up hurting your relationship because anytime you do anything out of a sense of obligation, even if you think it's the loving thing to do, and that's the trick. Our society convinces us that the loving thing to do is to do things that help people stay comfortable, okay? And it's hard to break out of it because it triggers our discomfort. It's easier to stay in the status quo of doing things out of obligation. I know with my parents in particular, like I, I remember I told them when I was starting to change, like guys, I'm going to be making some decisions that don't make sense to you. I'm going to be making some decisions that just you, don't, you won't understand and it will be hard for you to understand. Okay, and then that's what happened, and it's still happening at times, you know, but I just don't do anything out of obligation. And what they're learning is, is they're learning to accept me the way that I am because I'm kind of forcing it. I'm saying, guys, if you want to be in my life, if you want to talk to me on the phone, you, you can't put any emotional pressure on me anymore and say, oh, I need to do this because it's upsetting if I don't do it. Or, you know, I have to come home at Christmas because everyone would be upset if I didn't. Well, guess what? I'm going to go where I feel good about and, and I'm probably not going to go to a place where people have judgments about me and people have expectations on me. Because again, if I'm existing in a nice state of peace and rest, I'm going to choose to continue that. I'm going to go to places that are exciting. I'm going to go to places that are curious. I'm going to spend time with people who see me as awesome the way that I am, who want more of me the way that I am, who think that I'm funny, who think that I'm smart, who think that I'm attractive. That's where I'm going to spend my time, not with people who say they love me, and I'm not talking about anybody in particular here. I'm, I'm, I'm more bringing you into your experience of this. You know, who do you spend your time around? People who push and pull on you and have expectations. And what's great is as you learn to live freely, to live authentically, authenticity, which means being true, being in integrity. You know, if you're feeling upset, you speak to it. You speak your truth, okay? You are navigating your environment based on what feels right to you. And as you do that, all the chunks of emotional debris just blow off and break off. Your heart starts to open more and more and more and more. And you start to deal with conflict in a way that stays connected. And that is really what is the beautiful day, when you start to be able to deal with intense conflict with people and stay connected to them. You know, like if somebody were to grab me and like try to, um, I don't know, take my wallet or something, I would grab their arm. You know, I'd look them right in the eye and be like, hey, uh-uh, uh-uh. Give me that wallet back and I would put it back in and, and I'm knowing that they're a good person. I'm seeing the light in them, but it's like, no, no, but I'm saying no to the experience of having my wallet taken away so I can deal with conflict, but at the same time, stay personally connected to the person who I'm in conflict with. I don't push them out of my heart. I don't want them pushed off the earth so that I can be happy <laughs> and it feels so good. It really does to be able to see people as good. That is our home base state. Just like in that meadow example where the person comes up and who's like yelling at you. Can you imagine? Like no matter what they say, you just see them as a beautiful creature. Just like a little kid who gets mad and throws a tantrum and might say, I hate you. And look at that child and see, you know what? I, I see your anger. I see all of that. Wow, that's a lot of energy. And it's like, it's kind of beautiful. It's kind of cute. But when, when it's people who we perceive as our peers, we take it personally. And it's like, whoa, that person, oh, we get all triggered. So know that you deserve peace and that you are responsible for creating your own peace. And it's your destiny. It is your destiny. <sighs> if you know your worth, if you know you're worthy of it, and I'm here as a guide and as a friend to say you are worthy. You are good. And as you live freely, you'll learn that more and more and more and more. So know your boundaries, live your boundaries. It's these little small steps and know that people around you are going to accuse you of being selfish, being self-centered, being mean, unkind, but that's their way to try to keep you to conform because it makes them uncomfortable. And I'm here to say, break on through to the other side because it's great here. We rest in peace. Peace. Love you.